going to be talking about grace tonight. Yeah. Okay, Acts 4. Starting in verse 32. Now all now the multitude of those who believed were one heart and one soul. So they were in unity, which is important. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. So that tells you right there there's levels of grace. Yes. There's grace and there's great grace. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I want the great grace. Amen. And it was it was it was upon them. It was upon them. And it was upon them all. So they weren't it wasn't just ministers. It was on all of them. So we know we can have great grace. All of us can have great grace. Now, grace and favor are the same Hebrew word. We have extraordinary favor of God is what it means. It implies, it also implies to bend down, stoop down in kindness. It's a gift not earned or merited. It's a, a gift that is given. It is more than that, more than that, though. It is favor, it's anointing, it's ability, it's support, it's wisdom, it's enablement. That's what grace is. You know, there's, there's many times when I will be in a situation and I'll say, man, you know what? I don't think I can do this anymore. So I'll pray. And I'll say, okay, Lord, I need some more grace in this area. And I'll, I, I've even said, you know, I either want more grace or I want another assignment. And usually he'll say, or grace. So we are saved by grace, but we also can live by grace. We can do nothing, nothing without his grace, really. I mean, we can we can't we can't even really take a breath when you get right down to it. It's his grace that we're even here tonight. That's right. You know, I think about where I was. And then I'm here. You know, I had one one girl say this that I went to high school with. She said, uh, somebody was telling her my story, and they said, man, God can do anything. That's right. Because my past was so bad. <coughs> what a reputation I had there. <laughs> but that's what she said. So, and, you know, I could go into details, but I won't. But I'm just saying that it's the grace of God. It's nothing that I did other than I made myself available to him. You know, the son of my David, I love him with all my heart, all my mind, all my mind, and all my strength. And I will till Jesus comes back. And I'm not ashamed of his name. And I don't fear to say that I love him. But anyway. I mean, you all knew where I came from. Anyway, we, with enough grace, we can do anything. That's right. Man. We can receive anything. We can endure anything. You know, I think about Stephen. Remember when Stephen was stoned? That was the grace of God upon his life. That was the grace that he was able to stand there. And they stoned him, and he said, Father, no. Forgive them, don't lay, don't lay this to their charge. And, and they sit there and stone him to death. That was the grace of God. You know, I don't think he felt it. What a grace. We can have that grace, y'all. We can have it. You know, there's enabling grace. You know, I think about the scripture. You know, I'm not even sure where it is. I'm just going to quote it. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. That's an enabling grace. Yes, he can strengthen you in any situation. You know, it's, ha it's happened to me here. You know, like, when you get up early, you get here, 
you do all the preliminaries, you know, in other words, you get the envelopes in and you do this, you do that, and then you, you minister, you know, you pray, or Pastor Rick ministers, whoever, you go eat, you hurry, you come back, and at the end of the night, I want to help Pastor Rick and Pastor Penny clean this church. Sometimes I'm like, Lord, and I'll say, and I know they do this too. I'll say, God, I need some grace here. Amen. Every time he gives it to me, every time I get a strengthening. Every time. It's a supernatural strengthening that I get. And I can do it. And I'm glad I did it. That's right. Amen. But you can just, you can ask him. It's there. All we have to do is ask. Too many times we're doing stuff in our own strength. When all we got to do is ask. Right. You know, in Genesis 6 5, God repented that he even made man. Think about that. But because of Noah, who found grace in the sight of God, the animals and Noah's family were saved while the rest of them were, de were destroyed. Grace. It was grace. Noah found grace. You know, by grace through faith, grace comes first. Because think of it, none of us would be here without the grace. That's right. You know, it, it is, it is, it's only the grace of God that we can even get up in the morning. I mean, it, it's, it's the grace of God that I can even stand here. Sure. I, would, I, I wouldn't want to be here without His grace. That's right. Amen. <coughs> You know, the ark for Noah, the ark was grace for Noah's generation. Sure. Jesus is the grace for our generation. Uh, yes. And you Amen. know what? The flood's coming. Yes, it is. People need to get in the ark. Yes. They need to get in the ark of Jesus because the flood's coming. Yes. We know it. We know it. None of us have, have to fear that. But we need to be telling people, better get ready. Jesus is coming. We all have grace. Every one of us has grace. But we can increase in grace. We can increase in opportunity and ability. We can go, we can increase 30%, 50%, 100%. Now I think about 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace and earthly blessing abound to you. We need, to, we need to be making these, these things part of our confession. Amen. Because Jesus, the high priest, wants to bring it to pass for us. He wants to. He wants to more than we want it. Amen. He's able to make all grace and earthly blessing abound to you that you, having all sufficiency in all things, will have an abundance to give to every good work. That's what he wants. He, he doesn't want you to have to struggle. He, he doesn't want you to have to barely get by. He wants you to have more than enough. You know, things we have struggled with can become easy. Or we can, it can, be, it can be easier for us to read, receive things. We can get help with addictions. You know, I think about Bobby. You know, you know his story and how he said, God... I need your help. He was asking for grace. Sure. He got some doses of grace. Yeah. You know why? Because God saw his heart. He knew Bobby yeah. meant business. Yes. He knew he, he meant business. Sure. He wanted to be right. God gave him some grace on more than one occasion. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for that testimony. Because I know that I have any situation I can say, God, I need help with this area. And I know you, you did it for Bobby. You'll do it for me. You'll deliver me from anger. You'll deliver me from rage. I know you'll do it. And just like he did it for Bobby, he'll do it for you. Sure, yes. And he wants to do it in an instant, too. That's right. You know, we can have grace with people, employees, bosses, husbands, raising children, father, mother, man, raising children. I'm telling you, especially when you get to the teenage years. You need some grace. Yeah. Amen. I had to ask for grace 
meeting? <coughs> I remember one time uh, we had three teenagers at one time. And Josh was, I don't know, he, he was maybe five, six, or seven. You know, he was hearing it all. Teenagers. He just shook his hand. And then he looked, he became one one day. But you do you need grace for them teenagers. Yeah. But you know what? All of them, you know, we shouldn't put them all in a box, you know? Sure. Uh, I mean, all teenagers, you know. Right. Danielle, I know she's not going to be your typical teenager. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. That she's right. she's going to be different. That's my granddaughter, y'all. She's in the divine. <laughs> Listen to your grandma teach. She, she told me one day she's going to be just like me. What a compliment. Is that a compliment or what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all say this with me. Lord, Lord I'm, asking I'm asking for greater grace. For greater grace. grace. I desire it, Lord. I, desire it, Lord. I, hunger I hunger for it. Lord, Lord allow it to come upon me. Greater grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. <coughs> you know, in Luke 1, verse 28, Mary was highly favored. Yes. Think about it. The angel came to her and he said, Mary, you're, you're highly favored. And the favor in Mary's life changed our lives. And you know what? The favor in our lives changes other people. Yeah. So we need to be believing for favor and grace because what we do affects our family, it affects those we come in contact with, it affects the church, it affects, it affects the atmosphere. Yeah, Think it about it. Amen. It affects the atmosphere. Amen. In Luke 2 verse 40, the grace of God was upon Jesus. And in verse 52 it says, He increased in wisdom and favor with God and man. So if Jesus can increase in grace, we can increase in grace. Amen. Yes. It's there. Yes. You know, when it, when it seems hard or you're struggling, you are doing it in your own strength. Yeah. Think about it. You're doing something and it just seems laborious. You're doing it in your own strength. Sure. And all you've got to do is say, God, give me the grace. Help me to do this. You know, it's that thing, if, you know, God wouldn't have put me in the ring with it if you couldn't overcome it. Right. You know, we're more than conquerors. That's right. <laughs> you know, the world, they have to do it in their own strength. But we don't. We do not have, isn't that good, y'all? Oh, we don't have to do it in our own strength. Amen. We can call on him and he will help us. Yes. Amen. I want to go to, uh, Jesus said, I'm going to go to the scripture, I'm just going to read it first. Jesus said, come to me all you who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Light. Yeah. We forget that scripture, y'all. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Yes. He wants it to be that way for us every day. Not just here and there, but every day. Right. Okay, I'm going to turn to uh, the scripture. I'm going to go to Matthew 11, verse 28. And I'm going to read it in two or three different translations because it is so good. I'm going to read it in the King James. I like reading in the King James before I read it in the Amplified, and I'll tell you why. Because sometimes when I'm sitting there and someone reads it in the King James, in the, in the Amplified, without reading it in the King James, it can be so wordy for me yeah. that I will not get the full concept. So that's why I'm, I'm, I like to read both. Matthew 28. Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Well, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Man, that's good news. That is good news. Okay, I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Matthew 11. I'm using my little handy dandy iPad here. I'm not big on using technology, but I'm going to do it tonight because that way I don't have to carry three Bibles in here. Okay, here it is in the Amplified. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your soul. Don't you like having your soul refreshed? Amen. Boy, I do. I don't know anybody who doesn't like having their soul refreshed. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation. Recreation. Blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, not hard, not sharp, not pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. Think about that. If it's hard, if it's sharp, if it's pressing, that's not God's yoke. His yoke is supposed to be comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. Yes. His burdens are supposed to be light and easy to be born. Right. Think about it. I, I've heard, I, I think it might have been Pastor Budge. It could have been somebody else, but Chipper. But he would say, you know, God did not create us to be a pack unit. That's right. That's he right. created us to be a racehorse. Yes, that's right. Okay, I want to read it in the, uh, in the, uh, Message. It's really good in the message. Okay. My husband helped me uh, learn how to use this. <laughs> it seems like it's faster to turn, but it may not be. Matthew 11, verse 13. There it is. Verse 28. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Don't you want that? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, don't want that. I want it every day. I want it every minute. But we have to remind ourselves that it's there. That we don't have to carry a burden. That's right. It's hard. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Think about it. If you got something heavy on you, it is not God. That's right. The enemy is putting it there. <coughs> Or you're doing it yourself. Some people do, do it to fail. Some people are their own worst enemy. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Keep company with God, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. You know, we can we can ask God for grace for our marriage. And you need it. Because you get two people together. One of them's got one opinion, and one's got the other opinion, and sometimes it's. But you know what? You can learn to agree to disagree. You know, the, really, the, the big thing about marriage is usually it's a selfishness problem. Yes. Right. And we ought to be seeing how we can please the mate. That ought to be our goal. 
hungry. Think about it. They're our nearby. Who's more nearby than your mate? Yeah. <laughs> you know, too many times we rely on ourselves when we could call on him for some grace. Oh, I need some help in this marriage. You know, because sometimes, I mean, some, some people are not all that easy to live with. Just like, I mean, you know. And so sometimes you gotta you gotta call on grace. Amen. You gotta say, God, help me, help me, Lord, help me, and He will. That's the good news is He will. Y'all say this with me. Thank God, Thank God. for His great grace. His, great grace. His amazing grace. His amazing grace. It's on my life. It's on my, life. It's on my kids' life. Go to Exodus 33. This is a good example of grace and how gracious God is. Now, I, I am, I'm stirred up about grace, y'all. You know, I, I just think it's interesting how God does stuff, you know. I mean, you know what? If you're stirred up about something, you know what it means? It means you believe it. It means you, you have faith for it. You believe it. I, I, you know, I'm stirred up about it because I want it. I want it more working in my life than I've ever had before. Amen. Okay, starting in verse, uh, Exodus 33, verse 1. one. You know, God was upset with them. I'm just kind of giving a little synopsis. He was upset because they were making idols. They had started making, you know, golden idols. That, you know, and after all, God did and that form. They start making idols. You know? That's true. Okay. Starting in verse 33. Then the Lord, I mean verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here, you and the people who you have brought out of the land of Egypt. Y'all see that? God was mad at them. He wasn't even calling them his people. He says, you know, Depart and go from here, you and your bunch, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to your descendants, and I will give it. So God was mad. He was, he was upset with them. And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, and the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Pezzarite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to the land, falling with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you, on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. So he was mad at him. He wasn't even going to go with them. And when the people heard this bad news, they mourned, and no one put on ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. I could come up into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now therefore take off your ornaments, that I may know what to do to you. So the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Florida. So God was not happy, was he? He was not happy with them. All right, let's skip on down. He, he, you know, he just wasn't happy. Let's go down to verse 11, starting at verse 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. So he's saying, You know, you said, God, that, you know, I'm your friend. You know, what's up? We used to be friends. <laughs> you said that I have found, also found grace in your sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that nation <coughs> and your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. So, you know, Moses reminded God. He said, hey. Do I have favor or do I not have favor? God said, you got favor. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. So, you know. 
For how then will it be known that your people, and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are on the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your glory. So think about it. Now Moses had to remind God, you know, hey, you know, you said I had grace in your sight. And he, and he said, how, how, how are they going to know we're your people if we don't have your presence? So think about it. What is the sign of us having grace and favor? The presence of God. We've got to have the presence of God in our lives. Every day, all day long. So his presence, his favor, his presence equals his favor and grace. That's just so good to me. Because I know I'm going to increase it. I'm mean, I mean, as we speak, I am increasing in grace and favor. So that means I'm going to increase. I'm increasing. I'm not going to. I'm going. I am increasing in the presence of God. Don't you want that? Yeah, I do. I know you do. I know you guys do. Okay, let's go to Second Peter 3, verse 17 and 18. I'm just showing you some scriptures to show you that, you know, I'm not just preaching something out in that field, that we can increase in grace. Second, uh, Second Peter 3, verse 17 and 18 is one of them. I love you. I'm so thankful for His grace. I'm thankful that I'm here. I'm thankful that my daughter's here and my granddaughter's here tonight. Amen. You know, they could have drove all the way on home, but they didn't. I love them and they love me. Okay, verse 17 and 18. You, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. Be glad away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. So we are to grow in grace. Yeah. We're not just to get saved and study faith. <coughs> we are to grow in grace. And it does have to be received by faith. You know, you have to expect it. But yeah. we need to grow in it. Amen. We need to expect to grow in grace. That's right. Like, <coughs> no. You want, you want me to you want to read it or you want to read it? Okay, read it for me. It says, but grow in grace, under undeserved favor, spiritual strength, and recognition and knowledge and understanding of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the side. That's good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Did y'all hear that? Yes, that's good. All right, and here's qualifier. You know, there's always going to be qualifiers for stuff. Let's go to James 4, 6. But I like them. I do. I, I, I like knowing what I need to do, you know? James 4, verse 6. But he gives more grace more. 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 Yeah. So we, we can get more. That more wouldn't be there if we couldn't get more. Right. He gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You know, I'm, I'm going to read seven, even though I didn't have it written down. It says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. If you think about it, Satan was the king of pride. He was the author of pride. So draw, uh, 8 says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. 
He's going to give you more grace. I, I want more grace. I'm, I'm, I'm determined to keep you know, working on that, staying humble because, you know, you know, to me it's like, you know, it's so easy just to go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Saying she don't let anybody can do that. Sinner outside can do that. He can. He, he got on me. It's anybody can be critical. Anybody can be judgmental. It's easy to flow with. I'm not just saying the world. Even people in the church that are talking bad about people. It's easy to do that. I want to do that. I want to get in that boat and I want to go the other way. Amen. And I know he'll give me grace when I ask for it. It's just like that. Do you know that immediately when he said that to me, I said, that's not my fault. I said, that's not even, that's not my fault. I bless them. Yeah. And you know I don't even remember. I have no the enemy can just bring you thoughts. Sure. And I do not even remember what that was, what that thought was. Because as soon as it came, I took it and I cast it down. Sure. Amen. And I said, I don't want to be like that. Okay. I don't want to be like the world. I don't want to be a woman of grace. Right. And I want to walk in grace. All right, so we got to get the humble stuff on. You know, it says, you know, it, there's one place that says that we are to put on humility. Sure. Like, like a cloak. We have to put it on. It's just not, they are automatic. You have to put it on. You have to say, I say, I do this, I, especially before a minister, I say, God, you don't go with me. I, can, I can't do this. You know, you, you know. You can't, you can't do it. I mean, I could get up here and read it and say it, but if God don't anoint it, you're not going to receive it. That's right. So we have to put on that humbleness. Man, it is such a key. You know, and the enemy, that's one area, just like the money area, that he don't want you to know about. He wants you to Think how, you know, the world, like the world. If you don't think about yourself, nobody else will. You don't, you know, yeah. you, you don't put yourself first, nobody else will. That is the world's way of thinking. Exactly. We are to lay our life down. Our sisters. That, that's just the world's way of thinking. Yeah, yeah. And, man, I, I don't know, but y'all I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want, more. Yeah, yeah. I want to go higher. I want to go higher, higher than I've ever been. And I know we can. I know we can. <laughs> you know, we 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 can we get prideful and we can say, "Oh, we, I prayed and they got saved." Well, yeah, you may have prayed, but you didn't save them. Oh, no. That's right. We couldn't even spell prayer. <laughs> it wasn't for His grace. That's right. Yeah. Think about it. And you don't know how many people probably prayed before you did. That's you don't right. know how many people said, you know, God, you don't know how, maybe the grandma had been praying for years and years. That's right. Well, I prayed. You know, yes. We got to not do that. That's right. That's pride. It's pride. Yes. Well, I did this and this happened. You know, I, you know <coughs> it's the grace of God. Yes. yes, it is. Now, I do think we got to give you something to work for. Sure. We gotta pray. God needs us to pray. Right. But we do not need to be taking credit. I agree with that. Because that just gonna get you where Lucifer forgot. And I don't want to go there. Anyway, if it was not for his grace, none of us would be here. Right, we have a sustaining grace even to live. 
you, you think about all the germs out there. Just the grace. <coughs> you know, we have a sustaining grace right. to live. You know, you can get in the habit of thinking, well, I don't know, maybe something, you know, so maybe something you do every day, your job, whatever it is you do on the job. I got this. You know, those are the areas that you ought to be saying. I want to do a better job. Sure. Ever done? Yes. You know, just things that, you know, to us, they come automatic. But we ought to be believing, be believing Him for more grace Man. in that area. And we could come up. We could come up in our performance, in our favor, in sure. our, in our, uh, you know, we could get a raise. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. We could increase. Because when you increase in the spirit, it's automatic you're going to increase in the, in the natural, in the pocketbook. You're going to have more peace. You, you think about the nicer you are to people. <clears throat> what, what does it say? You can interact more bees with honey, with sugar, than you can with vinegar. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so the nicer we are. The more grace we're going to sure. have. Sure. You know, I, I'm thinking about Danny. You know, he God graces him to do his job. He'll he'll go he will go to bed at night sometimes and he'll wake up with the answer. First thing in the morning. That is grace. That is a grace. Amen. God will speak the answer to him. He can give you the answers. For stuff you don't even have a clue about. Right. And I remember, I remember being on the job, and and maybe my boss asked me a question. I, I worked in the oil industry, and I worked in the legal <coughs> part of it. And you know, maybe he'd be in a meeting, and he'd need something, and you know, it, he'd have these leases and these titles and all <coughs> this stuff, and he'd want to know something, and I would think, Lord, I don't have a clue. You're going to have to help me, Holy Spirit. And you know, he would. He would help me find the answer yes. in that legal document. And I, I wouldn't even, maybe never even looked at that document. But he can help you with stuff. Nice. All you got to do is ask. That's right. uh, many times we don't ask. It's there for the time. Right. Yes, Let's go to John 1. Verse 14. I like John, don't y'all? Think about John. Don't think about John. John went all the way with Jesus. You know, when he was at, they were at the trial, John was there. When he was being crucified, John was there. I mean, it's no wonder that John, you know, was used in so mightily and couldn't be killed. Because he had no fear. He didn't fear being identified with Jesus. It's no wonder. His love was so great that he put his money, his, his actions, you know, behind Jesus. He didn't just speak it in mouth. Anyway, John, I want to go to John 1, verse 15. Verse 14. I did it. It's first John, not John the Gospel. I wrote it down on my notes. First John, verse 14. I'm 
glad y'all love me. There it is. 114. Yep, that's why I love it. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus was full of grace. What are you full of? Are you full of self offers? No. Are you full of? Golf? Are you full of motorcycles? Are you, I say that because that's my answer. Are you? But he's not. Are you full of American Idol? Are you full of The Voice? No. Are you full of sports? What are you full of? Jesus. You ought to be full of grace. That's what you ought to be full of. I want more grace, don't you? Yes. The glory and the grace go together. Let's read John 15. John bore witness of him, and I, verse 15, and I cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Okay, I want to read this one in the Amplified. <coughs> it is really good. Uh, if you don't have an Amplified, it is so good to read as a study Bible because you know you can you can you know find out what what it what it meant in the Greek and the Hebrew. Peace is another sign of 
His presence. Do you have peace in, in yes. your life? Yes. If you have peace in your life, it's a sign that He's there. Amen. Okay, I want to go to Acts 20, verse 32. This is a good one. I'm going to read it in the Amplified first. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those, those who are sanctified. <coughs> so the word of grace can build you up. You just got to feed them. All right, I want to read it in the uh, Amplified. And now, brethren, I commit to you, I commit you to God, I deposit you in His charge, entrusting you to His protection and care. I, and I commend you to the word of His grace, to the commands and the counsels and promises of His unmerited favor. It is able to build you up and give you your rightful inheritance. Your rightful inheritance. Amen. Among all God's set-apart set ones, those consecrated, purified, and transformed of the soul. That's good, isn't it? Yes. That's just good. You know, really, the limitation is what we can receive. We're, we are only limited by that, y'all. <coughs> grace, here's what grace is. It's opportunity, it's ability, it's enablement. It contains everything that pertains to life and godliness. Yeah. Which is life, joy, yeah. and peace in the Holy Ghost. Y'all say this with me. The word of grace, word of grace builds me up, builds me up and, makes me and makes me strong. So we need to feed on the word of grace. Yeah. Yes. Just like the word of faith. Yeah. We need to be feeding on grace because it will build us up. Yeah. It gives us our inheritance. And grace comes by hearing. Yeah. Just like faith comes by hearing, grace comes by hearing. We need to stay built up in the Word of Grace. Paul is, he's admonishing them. Right. Right. Stay built up. Yes. This, is, this is how you're going to receive your inheritance. <clears throat> grace equals the presence of God. Amen. Right? Yes. In Psalms 5, verse 11 through 12, it says, He will surround <coughs> you with, he, well, it actually says, encompass you with a shield of favor. He says he'll surround you with it. Think about this. The presence of God surrounds me That's like right. a sheep. Yeah. If the presence equals the grace That's and the favor. Amen. The presence of God. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, In your presence is fullness of joy. So we got to walk in grace so we can have his presence. Are you living in the grace? Are you? Yes. That's a question I'm asking. Are you? If not, you can change it tonight. All right. Amen. Okay, I want to go to Psalms 30, verse 5. This is a really good one. <coughs> and then I'm going to the Amplified in this one too.
Proverbs 6, 6 says, As for me and my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. That's a good one, isn't it? Number seven, by your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. That's good, isn't it? You hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. But he wants to establish us like a strong mountain. And you think about that. Five, I mean, I can't get past that. But his favor is for a lifetime. Amen. Not just when you get saved. You know, you think about, well, we, you know, he saved us by grace. But it's, it's till we, it's throughout eternity. His grace is throughout eternity. That's right. For in his favor is life. Amen. Life. Life abundant to the full till it overflows. That's just good. I really like that <clears throat> scripture. So when you get tired, you can get more grace. You know, Jesus had faith without measure. The presence on him was so strong that when he spoke, they just fell out. And they tried to take him. We can have that kind. Sure. We can have that kind of presence yes, in our lives. Sure, yes. But you know what Jesus did? He only said, he only did what he heard the Father say. Amen. Yes. But we can do that too. <clears throat> Hebrews 4.16, Dan said this one this morning. We can obtain grace to find help in our time of need. So God gives us grace to overcome any sin, anything. He gives us the grace. All we have to do is ask. I mean, I, I admonish you, ask little things, not just, not just the big things. You know, some people would increase in, in grace if they would just become more thankful. That's true. Because thanksgiving increases your capacity to receive. Amen. You know, there's people that, you know, they're always talking about what's wrong and, you know, what didn't get done and what this one did. If he just started saying, thank you, God, that I'm breathing. Yeah. Thank you, God, that I woke up this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, God, that I have a cracker to eat. Right. You're not going to get anywhere that way. Yeah. You can increase your grace just by being right. faithful. You know, God preserves the faithful. Yes. He says He will preserve us. Yes. We need to be faithful. Right. We do.